So it's it's something that is difficult to say because I have the feeling that every time I, I, I would say a name, I would betray somebody else by not saying their name. So it has been a path, you know, where there has been a unified field of consciousness coming my way and every teacher I had has been playing its own uh, role. The, the mystery school that that I was in for about 12 years, I'm not going to mention that that name and that teacher here for, uh, you know, privacy reasons and, and um, I don't know, there is something that doesn't give me fully the right to, uh, to connect the audience on a large scale to, to that school. The reason why they are called mystery school is because they, <laughs> they are mysterious and very often secret. So, but what I can say is that they are connected with you know, streams around the world that have been active and uh, you know, are connected sometimes with uh, Kabbalistic or Sufism or you know, secret Tibetan schools. So those schools you know, create a channel. So those are the physical ones. But after that, you know, the, the, the influential figures have all been teachers and masters that I never met physically. And you might be familiar with the idea of the, the planetary hierarchy. Uh, in, uh, in the 19th century, there was a master, Russian master, who is called Madame Blavatsky, and she talked about something which is called the secret doctrine, or Isis unveiled, and she talks about the dynamics of evolution of planet Earth. And she created something which is called the Theosophical Society. The Theosophical Society was born on the day, official day, when the New Age started. So this is 1875. New Age is the age of Aquarius. It's an astrological transition that we are in. And what this woman started doing, she was talking about an invisible government of teachers and masters and saints that have been guiding the evolution of planet Earth and the evolution of humankind. It means that those teachers have the power to be influential in core decision makings. And you have different different rays of evolution, you know, we call that the seven ray theory. You know, with the ray of power, the ray of religion, the ray of knowledge, and, and so on. Not going to go into details, but in there you have different masters and teachers who are the key players. And at the end, at the, the head of this system, there is a being that we call Sanat Kumara. Kumara means prince, Sanat saint. So it's the holy prince. And um, in this hierarchy you have the Christ figure, you have uh, Jesus, you have uh, another being that is called the Manu, Mahashohan, uh, different you know, teachers that have been appearing during the evolution of humankind. You know, when people talk about Saint Germain, they talk about a real being that existed in, uh, in, uh, in previous centuries and that has been reincarnating through, throughout history. So, what we call the planetary hierarchy is like this hierarchy of saints, all the teachers that have been meeting, you know, somehow fit in that system. And uh, one of them is a Himalayan master who is called Mahavatar Babaji. So Mahavatar Babaji is a, is a mythical figure that is said to be in the same body for like something like 800 years. And um, you know, for me, represents the the essence of yoga and tantra. When I came across this figure, you know, it was in a book, and I saw this picture. I had that the feeling that the vibration of that picture represented my path, what I was supposed to be following. So when I give you techniques like uh, vital force techniques and energy techniques, this is what I uh, I'm connecting with. I'm connecting with a source that is not the crystallized teaching forms of a Swami or a Guru who exists in a physical body. I'm tuning into an original teaching back in the sources of the Ganges in some cave, in some Himalayan cave and really receiving direct access of knowledge to, to that source. So it's very intuitive. It's an intuitive guidance. And uh, I would say that those invisible masters have been like 
the core influential figures for the last, you know, probably 15, 20 years. Like I engage in lots of journeys just guided by this internal feeling, you know, across some valleys in Ladakh, I went around the world, I went to the pyramids of Egypt, crossed some deserts, ended up in jungles, <laughs> you know. And all that is always because there is a calling, there is something to discover and, and experience. And uh, so sometimes you will have a physical master, so a teacher who comes in a physical form, and sometimes it's a more intuitive figure, like something that comes from within. You know, the, the totality of Christianity is based on following the Christ, who doesn't appear in a physical form, all you have left is the Bible. <laughs> and uh, it's like, and every, you have millions of people around the planet who believe in a figure or a being they never met physically. That guides their heart. Buddhism, the same thing. Islam, the same thing. The prophets that all these religions are following, nobody physically alive today met them, physically. So it's, so it's all an intuitive guidance. And you have the scripture, you base yourself on the scripture, but when you don't have the scripture and you go meditating in the desert by yourself, what do you have? If you don't have scriptures, you just have your intuition, you just have an internal guidance and a calling and a prayer. So you establish a, an energetic, telepathic relationship with that, with that source. And this is what really guides you. You take a book, if it doesn't resonate, you don't follow its teaching. The reason why it resonates is because you feel the vibration, you feel a frequency that matches your needs. So it's all very intuitive. Right? And when you meet somebody physically, a teacher or a master, you recognize something because there is something else telling you that it's right. It feels right to say yes to that person. Yes, teach me. Yes, I accept to follow your teaching for a while. And the moment this happens, that's very secret, because that person becomes a, a transmission channel for you to access deeper levels of consciousness. So it's like grabbing you by the hand and allowing you to, to explore certain aspects of your life that it would take you sometimes much longer to explore by yourself. So um, a, a teacher or a master or a guru will be an accelerator of your consciousness. It will give you shortcuts so that you don't have to figure out everything by yourself. And it's, it's very, you know, it's very powerful. I have, I have a very deep, profound respect for when, a, when a, a student or somebody says, you know, I have a relationship with a guru or a teacher. It's a very secret thing because it's like there's an energetic transmission happening there. And yes, there is all the shadows, you know, all the stories that we hear about abuses and so on, and it's like any aspect of life. There is always, you know, some shadows involved. But the essence, the core is always present. It's, and it's a very powerful, secret relationship.